Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, February 10th. It's 1.30 p.m. here in Las Vegas. I'm Brad Restituto. You can follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, at Brad the Believer. And please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just type in Brad the Believer. The rest stop is the podcast. Uh, this is not the podcast. This is going to be a 10-minute video of a Super Bowl 56 breakdown, which will take pr- place at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles this Sunday between the Cincinnati Bengals representing the AFC Conference and the LA Rams. So I want to try to put together a bunch of short videos and clips uh, to get more content on YouTube. So this is going to try to be a quick little breakdown. There's so much to talk about, guys. I would love to sit here and break down everything for an hour, but we're going to do a lot of short videos for the time being before we have some other projects that are in the works as well. So this one is strictly going to be a Super Bowl 56 breakdown that will take place this Sunday at SoFi Stadium between the Bengals and the Rams. Uh, First of all, I think the most obvious matchup that people are keying in on when they're deciding who's going to win this game is the LA Rams defensive line led by all pro Aaron Donald against the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line, which in the divisional round gave up, gave up nine sacks to the Tennessee Titans, but they still found a way to win. So a lot of people are looking to that. And that's probably the big reason why the LA Rams are a four to four and a half point favorite in Sunday's matchup. Let me start off with the Rams head coach. Sean McVay leads that offensive charge. Offensive coordinator Kevin O'Connell is is the play caller in addition to Sean McVay. O'Connell, we know, took the job as the Vikings' uh, new head coach that has not been made official because of the Super Bowl. Will that be a distraction? That's a good question. Uh, So that's something to keep an eye on. We know how fantastic McVay has been over the years as a creative offensive play caller. And Matthew Stafford is, is now the general behind center for the Rams. He's had a really solid playoff run here. He's played great in key moments. So Matthew Stafford has elevated his stock from what it was in Detroit and looks to be the guy to take the Rams to the next level. Well, the Rams have been here before, ladies and gentlemen, and the Rams have been here with Jared Goff at their quarterback as their quarterback. When they did uh, make their Super Bowl appearance, I believe it was four or five seasons ago against the New England Patriots, their offense was anemic in that game, and they found a way to lose to the Patriots and Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. Um, They have another opportunity to uh, make it right. Now Matthew Stafford will be under center. uh, And this team, a lot of the media and a lot of the fans are are calling uh, the Hollywood Rams because you have some big personalities on this team, one of which is Odell Beckham Jr., the uh, flamboyant wide receiver who was uh, not traded but released by the Cleveland Browns midseason, signed with the Rams as a free agent, and is certainly – got back to form like he was as a New York Giant earlier this year. So Odo Beckham is going to be a factor in this game, but a guy that uh, is going to be probably the main factor on that offense for the Rams is Cooper Cup, a perennial MVP candidate. The guy uh, is the triple crown leader, winner, whatever you want to call it, as far as receiving goes in the 2021-2022 season. He led the league in touchdowns with 15-plus receiving yards, receptions, the guy has been outstanding. Is it due to the fact that he has just raised his game after that season-ending knee surgery the season before? Is he that good, or is it a combination of him being great, a great route runner, great hands, and in combination with the play calling of McVay and O'Connell putting him in positions to be open and make plays? That's going to be a great storyline to follow. We don't know the complete answer to that. It's probably a combination of both, both, and it's probably a matter of opinion. But I'm sure if you ask Cooper Cup and you asked Matthew Stafford, they would say the same thing. It's not strictly one or the other. So that's kind of the highlights from the Rams offense. Now the running game is going to be starter Cam Akers, who played his college ball at Florida State, came back from an Achilles injury that he suffered, I believe, in the preseason and made his way back to be in the starting lineup here in the playoffs. Akers has played well. He had some moments, though, that are regrettable in the Tampa Bay game where he put the put the ball on the ground, turned it over, and the Tampa Bay Bucks took advantage. Fortunately for the Rams, it did not cost them a victory. So Cam Akers will get to start at running back. Sony Michelle, who was acquired um, – right before the season started or right after training camp, I believe in a trade with New England. Sony Michelle is the backup. He will get some touches, and it looks like Daryl Henderson, who had a big role in the Rams running game in this offseason, 
uh, he uh, is expected to play in this game. Uh, offensive line injury of note, I believe Andrew Whitworth, who, who missed most of, most of the playoffs. I'm not 100% here, guys. I don't have the notes in front of me. I'm just going off the cuff. But Andrew Whitworth, I believe, will be in the lineup at tackle. I'm not 100% sure. His backup, Joe Noteboom, who played very well in his uh, replacement at the tackle position, he is questionable for this game. Other than that, Rams seem pretty healthy. Jalen Ramsey on the defensive end was in the injury report, but we know about this heralded. L.A. Rams defense led by Aaron Donald, who is a beast in his own. They acquired Von Miller, uh, the former Super Bowl MVP with the Denver Broncos earlier in the season. And that pass rush and defense for the Rams has been absolutely ferocious. And they are going to be a lot to handle. So when we go to the Cincinnati side of the ball on offense, Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon at running back, Jamar Chase, uh, uh, Uzada, C.J. Uzada, the tight end. Um, he will. Uh, he's expected to play in this game. Uh, the offensive line, Riley Reef acquired um, in the offseason to play tackle. Uh, so we know some of the big names on the Cincinnati Bengals roster. Uh, the coaching staff, on the other hand, has uh, really not got the credit that they deserve, led by Zach Taylor, the head coach. And uh, the defensive coordinator, I'll get his name here in a second. But this defense has been absolutely underrated, but they have come to play here in the playoff. Um, and they've really done a fantastic job, especially in the second half against the Kansas City Chiefs. They held them to three points. So to do that and, and to really turn – Ryan Tannehill over three times in the divisional game, unbelievable. So the rest of the coaching staff that deserves credit because they have really stepped up. Lou Anarumo, who's got 10 years of experience, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce his name, and that just goes to show you, I know my football in and out, and I'm not familiar with Lou Anarumo, but he's been 10 years a defensive coordinator, and he's done a fantastic job for the Bengals. And this guy will be in discussion for a head coaching job if the Bengals win the Super Bowl. I can promise you that in years to come. Offensive coordinator Brian Callahan, 12 years experience. Uh, you know Bill Callahan, the relation there. Bill Callahan uh, was with the Raiders for a long time, Nebraska football. So these guys deserve a lot of credit. Colt Anderson is the assistant special teams. Colt Anderson played in the NFL many years as a special teams ace. So I'm not going to name every uh, coach on the coaching staff of the Bengals, but le let's be clear that they deserve a ton of credit. And, and this is where I'm going to go with my prediction, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we'll, you know, briefly talk about some of the defenders on the Bengals because they deserve that credit. Isaiah, uh, I'm sorry, not Isaiah, Isaiah Prince, but on the defensive side, Trey Hendricks in the defensive end who played a really good game against Kansas city made uh, Patrick Mahomes uncomfortable a bunch of times is uh, is one of their main defensive linemen, Sam Hubbard as well. Number 94 on the defensive line played a fantastic game in the playoffs. Uh, Cam sample is another backup defensive end who creates havoc on the defensive side of the ball. B.J. Hill and Mike Daniels on the defensive tackle positions, uh, both veterans in this league. Uh, Larry Ogunjobi uh, at a N NC Charlotte in his fifth year, a really small school, 6'4", 305. Ogunjobi has been a really good player on the interior for Cincinnati. D.J. Reeder out of Clemson in his sixth year defensive tackle is also a, a fantastic player from the linebacker position in this unheralded no name such defense of the Cincinnati Bengals because all we've talked about all week is Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Jalen Ramsey, but this Cincinnati defense will be ready to play. Mark my words there. Akeem Gaither at the linebacker position, Clay Johnston, Jordan Evans, a couple young guys there uh, under five years in the league. And then the secondary who's played well, Eli Apple out of Ohio State drafted by the New York Giants at one corner. Uh, Chidobi Awuzie from Colorado in his fifth year. Buffalo, he's played solid. Um, when you go, Trey, Trey Flowers gets in in the, in the nickel, as well as Vernon Hargraves, the third from Florida. Mike Hilton, also a starter on this team. Trey Waynes, who played at Michigan State, uh, former Viking. He's a part of that secondary. Ricardo Allen and Jesse Bates, Von Bell are the safeties. Uh, Bates and Bell, usually the starters, have played excellent from the safety position. This team has depth in the secondary. And a lot, like I said, a lot – uh, of no names, uh, but this team uh, is really solid. Uh, guys, quickly, because I don't want to make this too long a video, so I'm going to wrap this up in two minutes. Joe Burrow um, is going to be 
the X factor in this sense. I don't think the Cincinnati Bengals necessarily get off to a, a glaring start. They could fall behind early in this game. And I think this is a fantastic matchup that will go back and forth at some point in the game. Even if the Rams get out to a two-touchdown lead, I think the Bengals will come back. If I'm the coach for the Cincinnati Bengals, and, I gotta get, and I've given them a lot of credit, you know, they know, the fans know, everybody knows the mismatch on the Rams' defensive line and the Bengals' offensive line. Knowing that and having two weeks to prepare, whatever the Rams have seen through 16 or 18 games or 19 games on tape, the type of running and passing tendencies that the Bengals have on first and second down, you've got to have counters built into this matchup to counteract that defensive line. So if that means that you line up in the shotgun on first down and you run play action out of the shotgun or you run handoffs out of the shotgun, keep that defense off balance the strategy in this game is going to be crucial in the execution of keeping that defensive line off balance because what do they have to go on the tape that they've seen in the playoffs and throughout the season of the tendencies of the Cincinnati Bengals and it's about the adjustments that Zach Taylor and that coaching staff will make to counter that defensive line it may be putting in plays that we have not seen on film all year from the Cincinnati Bengals whether that's uh, a wide receiver Screen pass, if we see Jamar Chase passing the ball, if we see tight end screens, if we see reverses. And I'm not saying that you have to be gimmicky, but I'm saying that you're going to have to have counters. We know that we're going to see quick screen game to counteract that defensive line. But also, if I'm Zach Taylor, I'm putting in a counter to that screen. So meaning I may have Joe Mixon run a wheel route, which meaning I'm going to pump fake the screen on a quick play to Jamar Chase. The defense is going to bite and Joe Mixon out of the backfield is going to run a wheel route up the sidelines, more than likely going to be on one-on-one -on -one coverage for a linebacker. We know Joe Burrow's accuracy. So it's those type of counters in the offensive game plan and the offensive play calling that is going to be absolutely crucial. And what set, sets Joe Burrow apart aside from his poise, his leadership, his confidence, is Joe Burrow is more prepared for the game of football and what the game of football throws at you than any of the young quarterbacks that are now playing. I, I compare Joe Burrow's preparation to the greats, Montana, Manning, Brady. Yes, he's in his second year, but to take this Cincinnati Bengals franchise to the Super Bowl in his second year, his first year fully healthy, even though statistically he hasn't blown you off the page with his numbers or with his arm strength or with his speed, the guy is cool, calm, and he feels absolutely prepared for every moment. So I've got to believe with these two weeks to prepare him and the receiving core of Higgins, Boyd, Chase, and the tight ends, along with Mixon, have got to have some communicative counters and audibles at the line understanding that they have a mismatch with the Rams defensive line and their offensive line. And th those type of audibles are going to be crucial because if, if you guess right and you take advantage of one-on-one -on -one coverage, if they're, if they're playing the press expecting um, a quick pass and that, and that offensive line can hold up one or two plays and the offense receivers and quarterbacks can execute on those one or two plays where they do have time, we could see some big plays in the second half from the Cincinnati Bengals. And that's what I expect to happen. I expect Joe Burrow, and I expect the Cincinnati Bengals coaching staff to have answers to the Rams' defense, and I expect them to make more big plays. And I think it's going to be a great game, and this is not taking anything away from the creativity of Sean McVay and his offense and what they're capable of doing. But I think that the Bengals defense has been underrated all year. We've seen that Matthew Stafford has a tendency to turn the ball over. And I think he will in this Super Bowl. And I think when it comes down to it, I consider the big three in Cincinnati, the three most important acquisitions in this season and the three most important players, Jamar Chase, who they drafted over Penny Sewell, which was controversial at the time, of course, hands down quarterback, Joe Burrow, but kicker Evan McPherson. In my opinion, he's one of the best kickers we've seen in multiple decades. Of course, Justin Tucker's in that conversation, if not number one unanimously as well. But I think Evan McPherson will be that guy when Justin Tucker hangs it up or in that same conversation. So I think this game is going to come down to a few plays. And I think the Cincinnati Bengals win the game, cover the spread, and end up making just one or two more plays and making one or two less mistakes. 
taking nothing away from the Rams. They've got a couple more distractions than the Bengals. The Bengals are free rolling, ladies and gentlemen. They have got no pressure. Nobody expected them to be here. They, they, nobody is talking about any of the players aside from Joe Burrow. That defense is going to be something to talk about after this game. And I think McVay will be on point. But also the, the, the fact that Kevin O'Connell has been interviewing for a head coaching job that he will take, the offensive coordinator, there's a lot of distractions there, trying to put together a staff in a timely manner. And I think it's going to be a disadvantage for the L.A. Rams playing at home. Everybody asking for tickets, wanting to get to the game, family pulling you one direction or the other. The Cincinnati Bengals will play absolutely loose and free. I don't think they'll get off to a fast start, but I think ultimately when it comes down to late, the Cincinnati Bengals have come from behind. And I think the asses of the Rams and Matt Stafford will get a little bit tighter in the biggest game that he's ever played in the second half. And I think the Cincinnati Bengals win the game 23-19. Everybody enjoy Super Bowl. Stay tuned. Rest stop. YouTube. Uh, Brad the Believer. I'm going to post another video tomorrow on Friday. I'm going to have two guests joining me. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And stay tuned for the rest of the things we have prepared for 2022. Have a great weekend and enjoy Super Bowl 56.